account. All right, let's let's film something in substance. A valley. Are we gonna do that? You're not gonna talk. <laughs> Hi, this is Garrett Gunderson with my friend. My, you know, the man that tortures me most of the time and teases me and gangs up on me with my wife. Poor but, Garrett. But I do bring his mom into the mix because she's like my guard dog to keep him from cute. doing that. But this cute. is this is Sean Stevenson, the man who loves his life. He wrote the book, Get Off Your Butt, B-U-T, like your excuses, your reasons, because there's a lot of people out there saying, I'd live my sole purpose, but the stock market didn't cooperate. I'd live my sole purpose, but my brother, but my sister, but my, my wife, but my right. whatever. You know, we have all these excuses and reasons that hold us captive from the real potential and production that we have to bring to this world. So what if you could go beyond that and live an extraordinary life, regardless of circumstance, regardless of your past, regardless of what you're currently facing. But instead, you could understand what you could truly do, because everyone in the world has a sole purpose, but not everyone lives one. Now, this is a gentleman who's chosen to live an extraordinary sole purpose and uplifts other people all the time and has a lot of fun doing that. And what I realize about my life, Garrett, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about relationships or money or anything. When people see me outliving my dreams, my sole purpose, as you would say, if they are not playing big and they're not connected to their purpose, it scares them because they look at me and they think, whoa, okay, he's three feet tall. He's in a wheelchair. If I were him, I would be at home crying right now or I would be at home complaining. I wouldn't be doing much with my life and he's out there doing more than I am Okay, so that makes me uncomfortable. So what I have to do is one of two things. Either change and get with the program, connect to my sole purpose, live out my dreams, or which, which is a little more daunting, or tear him down. Say it's not real. Dis discredit him. You know, be, be very much from a negative, skeptical, cynical place. And I've learned in my life that it doesn't matter. If you're going to have lots of happiness in your life, you're going to have people that are going to be upset with that. Right. And you just have to keep moving. And I love, I love the people that hate me because I know they know not what they do. They are stuck. They are scared. And that's just a part of life. And anyone, when you go out into your life and you do something big, whether it's start a new job that everyone says, you're not qualified to do that, start a company, or ask somebody out on a date, whatever it may be, something where you're stretching yourself, you're going to have the naysayers. You're going to have people knocking you on your butt because they're scared. You're making them look bad. And some of them You're holding them to a higher degree of a higher standard. standard. And it's like, yeah, now I got to do it. And it's, and it's ultimately scary coming from, from a package like me. Well, you, you blow up the illusion, right? right? The illusion that it's just okay to live a certain level. You know, I and, take and, the oxygen out of their it's excuse. Like, yeah, it's like they, their excuse seems inconsequential. Once they see that, and now it's about, well, what are you going to do about it? Because it's like the the deception is gone. So you either now become a deceiver or you choose the different path. Now let's, okay, so that's that's relationships where people have been afraid and terror. Now let's go on to wealth here. I've had people say, oh, well, when I started early in my business, well, the reason why Sean's successful is because maybe he came from money. You know, I, I, it would be nice for me to have that kind of money like he came from, okay, what? I didn't come from it. I had a great childhood. I had what I needed, but I didn't come with a silver spoon in my mouth. And as I built up my own business, now people have to shift their excuse. Whoa, Sean's actually making his own money. Well, Sean must be cheating people out of, you know, that's the only way you can make money is to steal and cheat and lie and deceive. Now we have to discredit what I'm out there teaching, right? Now let's go into health. I'm in the gym. I'm working out. I got a six-pack set of abs. People, oh, well, that, that, that must be Photoshopped. They'll see a picture of me on Facebook, let's say, with my six-pack set of abs, and they'll go, that's Photoshopped. Because people, when they are scared, they have a choice. Step up or tear down. Right. And it's so much easier to tear down. However, it has much longer, more painful consequence to the individual. So what I've seen that you've become really good at, I've heard this. Uh, from one of my mentors, and I'm sure it's been said multiple times, is what other people think about you is none, none of your business. business, right? But you've really found a way to practice that. How did you? How did well, you, you can't do that in that? a militant way because that can come off. Or if you just hear it, you read it in a quote, it's not explained. People can say, "Well, but 
I care about other people. Well, you should. And that's why I follow up with care about other people. Just stop caring what they think of you. Because right. if you are constantly living your life, looking over your shoulder, do they, what do they think? What do they think? Am, am I, am, do my neighbors like me? Is this, is this, is this job a good job for, for what my parents would want me to do? I mean, if you're constantly worried about what other people think, you're a puppet. You're a marionette. And that's not a way to live. And it drains you. And you can't worry about what other people think. As you start doing bigger and bigger things with your life, you will get more and more people showing up telling you that you're you're a bad person, that you're out of line for teaching. I mean, I've had people say, well, if you really cared about me, you would give me your money. I mean, that's not how you make money. That's that's not at all. That's how you destroy it. That's right. That's how you create fear. That's how you create scarcity. in life. Because what if I gave you my money and then you spend it? Then what? Now I have to keep paying you money because I'm supposed to be benevolent and take care of you? No, that's not how we grow. You don't find your purpose because you're being... Absolutely. And there's so much value on this planet that I'm here to deliver. Whatever you're afraid to branch out, whatever it is that you're scared to leave your comfort zone, I'm here to tell you it's okay that you're afraid. You're not supposed to be superhuman. I've tried. Garrett's tried. It doesn't work. If a guru acts like they're superhuman or a teacher... They lie. They are lying. (laughs) They are lying. Your job is not to be superhuman. You will fall down. You will have uh, moments where you'll go, why did I say that? Why did I do that? And you know what? It's not about being perfect. It's about setting, what do you want in your life? What, what do you want your life to look like 10 years from now, 5 years from now, 90 days from now? And then, you know, maybe you don't even know how you're going to get there. That's what I love about my friends such as Gary. Is like, we'll set up an idea, and we don't even know all the steps to get there. <laughs> This we don't. True. We don't need this the steps. Yeah. Some people need the steps. We don't. And I'm here to tell you that when you get very clear in your goal, and you get very clear in what he teaches, which is your purpose, the action steps, the strategies will just start showing up. What the how tos will just start appearing, and that's what we believe you need to start doing is get clear in your goals, which is what I talk about in a lot of depth. Get clear on your purpose, which is Garrett Gunderson. Nobody's better than than Garrett, in my opinion, to talk about purpose. And then I promise you, the strategies and the action plans, it will follow you. You will be chased down by how to create that vision if you are clicked in with your goal and your purpose. I was once asked, someone said, so Garrett, you know, let's say we divided things up into two things. Vision and then specific steps. And if you had, if you know, you had only a hundred percent to give, what percentage would you give to each one? Would it be 50, 50 as the far as level of importance, 50% of its vision, 50% of its specific steps, you know, would it, and I said, it's a hundred percent zero, hundred percent vision. Yeah. It's a hundred percent vision because it calls you forward. And the thing is you will, you will have opposition with vision. Yeah. There well, are people. I didn't know how I was going to meet the Dalai Lama. I just sat down and put on my bucket list. I want to meet the Dalai Lama. It's, it's not like that's somebody you can just like pick up and dial, dial directly to your assistant and say, yes, the Dalai Lama, please. You're not going to be able to do that. Right. What did I do? I set the vision. I got very clear. What is that going to look like? I'm going to walk up. I'm, I'm going to have him walk up to me. I'm going to look into his eyes. It's going to be a phenomenal energetic exchange. And I got clear with the purpose. Why? Because I believe that the Dalai Lama and I, that there's some kind of synergy that will take place. For those that are watching, that those that are there, that it'll create a lasting memory that I can tell my great great grandchildren. That was my purpose, and because it was something I wanted to be around that energy space. Didn't have the strategies. Didn't know how I was going to do it, and I just started telling people. So here's my goal: I want to meet the Dalai Lama. And one day, as I kept telling the world that this is what I wanted, I got more clear on my goal and my purpose. The action showed up, and that's actually that was one of the events early events of our friendship is being at that yeah. event. I didn't know how I was going to meet him. It doesn't matter. I mean, most of the things in my life, I have no clue how I'm going to get it done. You know what? It doesn't matter. Because if I put my energy in what it's going to look like when it is done, I let the universe. It's like I'm subcontracting the details to the universe. <laughs> well, and, and it's like conspiring with the universe That's to right. accomplish it. And, you know, the, 
it, it's said that there's two guarantees in life, and I think these guarantees are weak. Death and taxes, that's what people say. I think there's two guarantees in life. The one guarantee is that if you follow your sole purpose, you have a guarantee to succeed. If you follow your sole purpose. And the other guarantee that comes with that is that you will receive opposition along the way. But that opposition will allow you to expand your sole purpose because it will be part of the ingredients that allow you to have clarity in your vision. And when you persist past that, you gain strength, you build leadership, and you move forward. And so this so, is... So let's, let's, let's finish up with a great sports yeah. analogy. Uh, you, you follow football, right? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Uh, what is the last... You know, what is the hardest yards to... Uh, to the one-yard line. Yeah, the yeah. hardest yard. The red one, zone. The red yeah. zone. That, that yep. 10 to 1. When you finally get to the goal line, you can see that goal line. The defense is up on you. And the, and the pressure is on you. And that's when you want to have very clear, what do you want? And why do you want it? And then you're able to go through and get to that goal line. And that's what Garrett and I are all about. And that's what you need to set your life about. You don't, you don't watch movies. You don't tell stories about no opposition. It's not like you sit there and get excited about the person that was born, lived the perfect life, and everything was great. As if that were really true. And that's why I don't resonate with a lot of the speakers up there that pretend like life is just perfect. You kind of gain some compassion and gain some camaraderie in the authenticity of a story where you recognize people were able to triumph over difficult situations and it's an interconnectedness that you bring to a human being. That's why I think we connected so quickly is I didn't, you know, I, it's like the things I say to Sean and around Sean is, are appalling to some people, but it's because, you know, for me, it's just like, I don't really look at that with you. It's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let, you know, it's like, cause yeah. I don't see that. So I could talk about it. If I was, if I was like seeing that, I wouldn't obviously it'd be like one of those things you don't talk so about. So stop right? justifying why you're evil right. to me. So okay. here's what I right. would say. When you go into the gym, what do you do? When you go into the gym, what has to happen in order for exercise to take place? You just have to move. You have to move. Yeah. You have to put resistance, resistance. on your body. Yeah. If I walked up to the, uh, the weight bar and I had all these weights in front of me and I thought, hmm. I want to uh, I want to build my biceps and uh, my pectorals and my abs, but I, I you know I don't want to I don't want to lift the weight. My body needs that weight. It needs that tension, and that's what life is going to give you. It's going to give you challenges so that you can sculpt your own power, so you can sculpt your own soul, so that you can actually then take on a bigger amount of weight, a bigger goal in your life. I tell people, if you want to start living a massive life, start taking on massive challenges. And you will develop that strength. You want to live a very small life? Don't do anything that challenges you. Stay on the couch. Just stay on the couch. Eat, eat the most junky food. Don't ever share an idea or an opinion that could get shot down. And don't actually, don't interact with anyone. Don't ever come in contact with a human. That'll be, that'll be effortless and pathetic and lame and a waste of your energy on this planet you were designed to be on this planet to contribute something of greatness it's not so that you can sit around and avoid challenges i'm sorry you're supposed to be out there contributing to humanity contributing to yourself and, and that's what i believe you're capable of so if you don't live your sole purpose no one else will you will have robbed yourself and everyone else in the world of whatever your contribution could have been. And you have to, I mean, the thing is, I, I kind of like the idea of imagine being on your deathbed. And if your idea is that you never lived because of fear of what someone else might think, could have a little conversation with you. This is what I think they might say. Hmm. You suck. Are you kidding me? You didn't live it. Now I got to die with you where otherwise I could have lived well beyond called your legacy. So the question is. Are you going to let someone else dictate what your legacy is going to be because of the fear of what someone might think? Or one thing is, if you're going to fully live your sole purpose, you cannot look for evidence in the world because it doesn't exist in the exact fashion in which you have. Only he or she that can see the invisible can ever do the impossible. So there we go. So there's no reason for excuse. We all face obstacles, but it's your choice to love your life, to embrace your sole purpose, and to give the gift to this world. Why? So that you can have the life that you enjoy. So, Sean, 
Thanks for sharing some of your insights, some of your life, and uh, really just some of the information that leads to, you know, inspiration, which I think is more important than motivation because motivation is kind of fleeting. Where inspiration has that long lasting longevity. uh, And so this is the deal. Hey, and thank you for bringing me into their life and for living your sole purpose. You, uh, you bring a lot of people a value, and I just want to let you know I'm grateful to see you do that on this planet, so thank you. All right, so what you got to do, check out Sean to a higher degree because in my estimation, in my experience, it's going to expand your sole purpose because his sole purpose has a big place in this world to inspire others to live theirs. So no more excuses. Get out of the buts and the reasons and into your life.